Huzzah, Rangers. This is Phil Harris again here at the Jacks Rangers show. I've got a very special guest. He's been on here before, but this is a different type of interview, guys. We've got Ed Doc Patnod here to explain everything about the 1st Regiment. So, Doc, how the hell are you? Doing great. Doing great. How are you doing? Not too bad, man. We both have a beer here. I'm going to open this bag up. Cheers. Check out the new merch, guys. I got a hat. Oh, and also... There's a red one too. And I have a shirt. It says musket size pants tent. It's not the best uh, thing to view right now, but um, yeah, the, the hopefully the, the shop will go live. I know that you have a shop as well uh, with the first regiment. So um, doc, for the people that may have missed our first interview, give us some background information about yourself. How did you find rugby? So I found rugby in the free jacks by accident. Um, it, was, it was a happy little thing. I was watching a movie. Invictus tumbled into the game, and then next thing you know, I'm just looking for one thing after another to watch, doing Google searches. Oh, look, we have a team in New England. Fantastic. Started going, fell in love with it, fell in love with the team and the organization, and it's just been fantastic ever since. Just keep going. Very nice. Um, plug your first regiment social media website and merchandise. Yeah, so uh, you can find us on the web at the first with the number one uh, regiment.com uh, is our website. And it's the same for our socials. So you just look for the, and then again, the number one first regiment. Um, you can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, um, and we have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Yeah, check out the merch, guys. So this is a, um, a scarf that they have that they are selling on the website soon. Um, it says hold the line on one side and the first regiment. So you're not going to be cool unless you have this walking into the first home game. Uh, I can tell you that for free. Um, yeah, so this is very exciting stuff. So I know that you've had a conversation with the club already in regards to this supporters club. Uh, we'll get into that momentarily. Um, so kind of give us a breakdown of what exactly the first regiment is and what made you want to start this. Yeah. So um, it's, it's a, it's a supporters group, just like any other sport. Um, mainly we're modeling after what the new England revolution supporters groups have been doing for years and it's been working. Um, so it was just a way to kind of bring the fans together in one cohesive, you know, kind of unit and like-minded same mission, you know, trying to, promote the game, you know, promote uh, our team, be fans, be respectful, be loud. We want to make the Fort Quincy the most uh, inhospitable for visiting teams as we can possibly make it while still being respectful to, you know, the people around us in the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not looking to be a bunch of hooligans, but <laughs> we're going to have that pride. Right. You're definitely speaking my language here about us being the most, the goal is the being the most intimidating fans and atmosphere in MLR. I love that. I think that's a great goal to strive for. Um, yeah, I, I, I want the opposing players to, to feel uncomfortable when they come to Fort Quincy, for sure. Yeah, yeah, loud and proud, baby, loud and proud. How can people get involved at this point? I know it's very early on in the organization's life here. Yeah, so um, the easiest way is to, uh, to tr you know, put in for our Facebook group. Um, that's the easiest way to kind of start getting involved. Um, you can also go to the website mm -hmm. and um, there is a, uh, a newsletter button. You can, you can sign up there. Um, we don't have the actual memberships live yet. We're working on, you know, getting the bylaws established, um, getting all that ground laid, and then we'll, we'll go live with the actual membership and, and things like that and what we can offer. But that's probably the easiest way. Or you, you, you can um, email me at doc at thefirstregiment.com. You can shoot me an email. You can find us on Twitter, connect however you can. Awesome, awesome. Um, and it's not first written out, it's one S T. One, exactly, yep, you got it. All right. Um, you recently had a first regiment meeting with the Free Jacks organization. Can you give us a rundown of what took place? We did, so um, you know, I've been in, in communication with them, just making sure that one, I wasn't insane by wanting to start this and that you know, it was a good thing that we were doing. And, the club has been nothing but supportive. They're excited. They're ecstatic about what we're doing. They're, they're very interested in, in doing things with us to, to help promote the team and, and promote the sport in, in the area, you know, because it's still relatively new to the area. 
people still don't know we're there at times. So it's a way to help them and help us at the same time and a little bit of give and take. So like I said, I had that first meeting and it went well. Um, you know, so we're just trying to lay out how game days are going to be for us and what events we're going to be able to have for other members of the first regiment and, you know, getting, um, you know, meeting places set up, you know, what are we going to do for away games and, and things like that. And just trying to work, uh, the foundation with the team. So I was at the first in-person meeting, official one at least. Um, this was last weekend that we did uh, schedule a specific date for the next in-person meeting. Can you go over that real quick for everybody? Yeah, so we've been having our in-person meetings over in Quincy. Um, we've been having them over at the Fowler House Cafe on Hancock Street. Great guys um, and gals, the place is fantastic. Um, they're very accommodating to us and, and welcoming. Um, so it's again, it's another way for us to give back to the community by having them there, bringing support to local businesses. So November 7th, um, it's a Sunday at noon, it's going to be uh, our next official face to face meeting. So if anybody wants to come and check us out, and mm -hmm. learn more and, and join us and they're more free than more, more the merrier. Come on down. Awesome. Awesome. What is a short term and a long term goal of the first regiment in your mind? Short term goal is. Uh, just to, to keep the group going, get everybody organized. And, and you know, the more, like I said, the more the merrier, you know, we're, we're looking at grow the membership and, and actually do things with fans. Um, so short term, I think it's just to survive, <laughs> uh, just to keep it going and, and just keep the momentum and the moving forward. Um, long term is, is more interesting for us. Long term, we're looking to actually become a 5013C, which is an actual nonprofit organization. Right. Um, so, so the goal for us is to help the youth rugby um, community. So in, in New England, we're looking to give back and, and, and help out those youth rugby programs in, in the various states. Um, they're struggling. Mm. You know, Rhode Island is um, just starting to set up their youth rugby. They've got a, a team down in Newport and a team in Providence, and they're struggling. They need the funds. They need the support. They, you know, need whatever they can get. So, uh, you know, long term is for us to be able to walk up to them and at the end of the season and say, here, here's some gear, here's some equipment, here's a check, here's whatever we can do to help you guys help the, the, the community. Very nice. Yeah, I, I don't think that I, I could be wrong. I, this is not something that I have my my finger on the pulse of, but I don't think there's any youth rugby that ha happens in New Hampshire. I know they used to have it. I know that Chris Lynn was a part of that, but I think it folded uh, at the beginning of COVID, and I'm not sure if it's back yet. So, th I mean, this is an important thing. We have to grow the game at the youth level. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the league might not survive um, past us watching it, right? Um, the, it, MLS knew this very early on. Is like, get the kids involved, you know, invite them to the games, whether it be, you know, discounted tickets because they have to bring their parents get them exposed to soccer, you know, show, show professional soccer to these youthful kids. And now it's, yeah. it's work because now those kids are now grown up and watching uh, soccer, uh, MLS specifically, um, and bringing their kids now to the game. So it's, 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 a, it's a pathway that has been um, already paved out by MLS and, and to show how it can be successful as a fringe sport and, and gain some uh, legitimacy and relevance in this uh, saturated sports market. So, yeah, it has to start there with youth, uh, get them playing rugby, get them exposed to rugby, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, and, and the Free Jacks themselves have been doing great, you know, trying to promote that as well. You know, they've got the youth rugby folks, they had a tent set up there at the games yep. to promote and, and get kids signed up and involved. And, you know, it's great to see that grassroots. You know, you got to start them young, hook them while they're young and, and get them going. My two young ones uh, have already fallen in love with it. And my youngest daughter, she can't wait to play. She's like, when, when's rugby starting back up, Dad? When are we starting practice again? When are we going? When are we going? Awesome. You know, so you got to keep that drive going. And like I said, you know, for us as, as a membership, you know, whatever we can do to give back at the end of the day is what we're looking to do. So, for sure. you know, whether it's, it's through, you know, merch sales or fundraisers or, you know, whatever it is that we do to bring revenue in, it's all just to go right back out to the community at the end of the day. It's fantastic, man. Um, just switching gears here, taking your uh, founder hat off of the first regiment. Let's talk about stuff as a fan real quick. What is your favorite moment from last season being a free Jacks fan, a Ranger, if you will? Oof. Favorite moment. I, I'd have to say there's probably it's a, it's a close tie for two, and and the first, unfortunately, I wasn't there for. I'd say the rain game. 
you know, um, I was at, unfortunately at home watching it on TV, but just to see that level of passion and commitment there and, and all the fun through social media and, and through the game that was just going on. Um, and then the last home match, the way we wrapped up the end of the season, I mean, we had, you know, our, our, our Dougie Fife appreciation night. We had everybody kilted up and showing up and coming out. And, yeah. you know, it felt, you know, being – you know, at the new place over, you know, Veterans Memorial, it it felt like a home. It felt like a stadium. It was more of a game day experience. And it was, you know, something that you, you could see that the Free Jacks were, were pushing for with each game. Every home game, it was getting better. They were working bugs out. It was improvement upon improvement. And that last game at the end of the season, you felt proud. Yeah. You, you felt proud to be a Ranger. You felt proud to be a Continental and a Free Jacks fan. It was just fantastic. Everybody loved it. It was one big family atmosphere. It was great. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. It was just, it seemed like everything came together in that one moment. And to beat um, Atlanta, too, who was the best team in the East, you know, it, it's, it just, it was like a Hollywood ending um, for that. A little cherry on top. Exactly. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So we've heard that Quentin Newcomer, Dougie Fife, and Joe Johnson have been retained for next year. What other player are you hoping comes back next season and why? Kenny. Mm. Atakama. Um, I, I think, unfortunately, you know, with him getting hurt last season, we didn't get to see as much of him as, as we should have. Yeah. Um, you know, even coming off the bench, he's just been explosive. He gets out there and he, he just, he's got nothing but energy the whole time. Um, so I think he's my, my first right off the bat. If I have to be put on the spot, I'd say definitely, you know, getting Kenny back out there on the pitch. Right. If I recall correctly, like he was the first big signing that I was like, oh man, this is, this team is going to be legit. They brought in a, a veteran Japanese prop. Um, and so I thought, you know, this is something that we need to take seriously um, because they're taking it seriously, obviously bringing him in. Now he's getting yeah. a little bit older now, obviously. Um, so if anything, you know, have him play, you know, whenever he can, but also like maybe coach the forwards um, or help out at least uh, yeah. in capacity. I think it'd be fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Not, nothing but a wealth of knowledge there. So it's like definitely, you know, get some of the younger guys under your wing and just you know, take advantage of it. And, you know, from what I've seen, you know, with the players, you know, getting there early and being there late, it's, it's definitely one big family, you know, they're all looking out for each other. They're all learning from each other. And, you know, with coach Martin there at the end of the season, you know, he was pushing everybody, you know, and they just kept getting better and better with each game, you know, it was, it was tough. I mean, we, you know, we were pushing for the playoffs. It didn't happen, but guess what? The season's our season. Yeah, I think we're going to be dangerous. I think they're going to they're really going to have to keep their eye on us this season. I agree. You know, and the, it's the fans' job to make the place loud. Yes. And like I said, uh, we, we want to, you know, have it be an issue for them coming into the fort. Absolutely. To get that place rocking, you know, shaking from us just stomping oh, yeah. our feet and yelling. Um, so this is a weird one. This is going to be a curveball for you. If you had to be a fan of L.A. or New York – who would you be a fan of and why? <laughs> LA because it's not New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, if I had to pick between the both, I'd probably say neither. But if I yeah. got to do one or the other, it's, it's going to be LA because, again, it's not New York. Sorry, guys. I, I would just love be to so, hate you. Yeah, I would just be so embarrassed to say I'm a Guiltini fan. Ugh, yikes. Uh, it's, hey, listen, pinky out when you say it, okay, sir? Make sure. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know what they're thinking. I swear. So please, embarrassing. LA, oh. if you're listening, please rebrand. Do us all a favor. Do yourselves a favor. Rebrand. Yeah. I mean, uh, you think about it like they don't even call Austin the Gil, uh, Gil Gronies. They just say the AGs. So those people down there were like, this is not going to work. I mean, they no. said that from the very beginning. They were like, this, this name is not going to work. So we're just going to call ourselves the AGs. So. Yeah, LA's got to do something. But. It's, it can't stay that. Please, God, don't let it say that. <laughs> All right. One word association here. So I'm going to say one word or a couple of words. And the first thing, first word that pops in your mind, throw it back at me, okay? All right. Mags. Fantastic. The first regiment. Outstanding. <laughs> Free Jacks. Family. Okay. Rugby United New York. Ugh. Boo. <laughs> all right would you a monster all right yep i agree um so last thing we're gonna do here before we get you out of here doc is i have written on a sticky pad here 
some names of players. So let's go back a couple of episodes. Um, the, the Outriders, myself and Dave, and the guest Outriders, which is Chris and Ted. We all you know, discussed among, among ourselves and decided who we wanted as dream signings for the Free Jacks, okay? Realistic, but dream signings. So um, there was one honorable mention that I mentioned here by the name of Joe Mahler, all right? He plays, uh, so it's, it's going to be hard to see, but he plays for Harlequins as a prop. So he is the one that is like the outlier here to a certain extent um, because he was just a honorable mention. So I'm going to put his name over here. And in the hat, I'm going to put all of our picks. Richie Gray, who was chosen um, by, I believe, Dave is the one that chose him. So I'm folding these up, and I'm going to put them into a hat right here, our tricorn hat. Tricorn hat. All right. So it's right in front of me. I'm folding these up to where you can't see the name, and I'm dropping it in there. So he is a lock from Scotland. Uh, that was Dave's pick. Alan Wynn, Alan Wynn Jones, Alan Wynn Jones, who is a Welsh player. He's a forward. Very, very good. Uh, so Chris selected him as a dream signing. I'm folding this up essentially just the same way in a square here. I'm dropping it into the hat. I picked as a scrum half, Danny Kerr, who plays for Harlequins, also an Englishman, um, along with Joe Mahler, who is an Englishman, but he is a prop. So I'm folding this up and I am getting a nice square there, okay? Dropping it into the hat. And the final selection was a South African born, but Irish um, national player, C.J. Stander, who plays eight man and sometimes flanker for Ireland. So I have folded this one as well, okay? And I've dropped it into the hat. So the hat is right here and I'm gonna kind of like look away. So th basically what we're doing here for the first um, question for people that we're gonna put out there as a poll, who should be going against Joe Marler to basically enter into the tournament of the the Free Jacks dream signing um, for the Jacks Ranger show. So I'm going to open this back up real quick. So keep in mind, this is Joe Marler is going to be the guy that whoever gets picked here is going to be off go. the opponent of. Okay. So I'm shaking it up. Okay. So I'm going to reach in. I am not looking. Here, here's my Dig hand. deep. Dig deep. This is above my head, so I can't see what it's going to be. I've got one. They're kind of sticking together. I shouldn't have done sticky notes. <laughs> Is there, okay. Uh, there we go. You folded I, them I had, fantastic. I had to pull. Uh, <laughs> I had to pull one off. Okay. So wow. It, it's Danny Care, guys. It's going to be Danny Care. Uh, both of these are these guys are teammates. Not only are they English national team players with each other, they also play on the same team, Harlequins, in the English Premiership. So Joe Mahler and uh, Danny Kerr will be Danny facing Kerr. off against each other um, to determine who moves on into the regular bracket, if you will, against the other names that I mentioned in our dream, Free Jacks Dream Signing Tournament, essentially. Woo! That was fun. Um, actually, let's Got go it. ahead and um, draw the rest of the... the um... You're going to get the bracket going? Yeah, we'll, we'll get the rest of the bracket going while I have you on here. So... There is three left in there. I can confirm that. Digging down in there for you. <laughs> All right, I'm just shaking it up, right? Okay, so it is now above my head. I cannot see who's coming. Verify, folks. He's not cheating. Okay, so Alan Wynn Jones. All right. Against. Again. Right. Who's this? Richie Gray, okay? So Alan Wynn-Jones and Richie Gray are teamed up together here. So the final one here is going to be C.J. Stander. So C.J. Stander will face off against Danny Kerr or Joe Mahler, whichever moves on from that first bracket or you know play-in tournament, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, all right. So 
Guys, the dream teams is set. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So everybody, um, follow the Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. We're going to have polls on there for these these tournament uh, big name dream signings. And uh, yeah, just trying to keep people engaged, obviously, in the off season here. It's just it's so long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, got anything else for us, Doc, before we get out of here? I've got one thing, and that's a, a great big huzzah. Huzzah! Woo!